everybody. Welcome to Stephen Hatfield's presentation, What to Smish. Uh, Stephen's a technology and cyber risk leader who currently serves as the manager of incident response and threat intelligence for Loan Depot. Stephen directly contributed to the success of financial services companies, including Hilton Worldwide, and most recently since Hinder Consumer USA, where he managed the incident response team. Stephen's got extensive background in enhancing organization cyber response capabilities while reducing their risk posture. As for the talk, globally we're seeing a drastic increase in smishing attempts. This will cover lessons learned while trying to identify methods of takedown, attempting to work with telco providers to and identify the groups behind this, and best practices for presentation. Y'all give, give it up for Stephen. Thanks everyone for coming out. I know it's late and last talk of the day, but we'll get through it. Um, so a little bit about me, uh, I've been working in IT since 2008. Uh, before that, I was just tinkering on my own, 08's when the Army formally trained me. Uh, I did eight years active duty, did a couple of deployments. Um, my last year in, I was able to manage the uh, AK ARNOSC, which is the fancy way of saying the Alaska Remote Network Operations Security Center which is just a fancy way of saying the Alaska sock. Um, but yeah, I was able to manage that my last year in the Army. <coughs> Controlled three bases throughout the state of Alaska, uh, working with Hawaii who managed us, so it was a lot of uh, interesting, interesting work. Um, as I said, I currently manage uh, incident response team and co-manager of threat intelligence for Lone Depot. Um, I complain a lot on Twitter, mainly at companies when their security sucks. Uh, I like to yell at like when we find phishing pages that are blatantly obvious, like Outlook, things like that. Uh, I post those IOCs out. Um, random fun fact about me, I do pro wrestling refereeing, so like WWE style. Uh, if you've been to any of the shows locally across Texas, you might have seen me before over the last few years. Um, and then I actually own a 15 acre horse ranch. So quick outline for today, uh, generally cover what smishing is, um, show some real world smishing examples, uh, go over the prevalence of smishing, vendor reach out attempt um, that we made, uh, the best practices, we'll talk about a group called the industry traceback group, um, some ways that telcos and the government can help, and have a Q&A at the end. So legal disclaimer, Lone Depot allowed me to speak here, I'm not speaking for Lone Depot, Got it, got it, thank you. All right, so show of hands, who has never gotten a smish? Everybody's got a smish, awesome. So uh, we all know it's when you get a malicious intent of a text message. Um, so they can be pretending to be companies, they can pretend to be loved ones, they can pretend to be Joe Schmo, doesn't matter. Uh, if the intent behind it is malicious, it counts as smish. A um, few examples that we've seen at Loan Depot. Um, the one on the left is actually a employee who was smished or attempted to be smished by their quote unquote manager. Um, reached out saying, hey, I'm in a webinar, can't talk, let me know if you can, if you got this. Didn't come from a known number of theirs, didn't, uh, wasn't their boss's direct number, so it was pretty easy giveaway. Um, the one on the right here was actually sent to a customer of ours. Um, and this one is kind of interesting because it mentions Rocket Mortgage, who's direct competition to us, uh, mentions Loan Depot, and mentions Experian, which is a totally outside entity from the two of us. Um, but basically, it's somebody reaching out saying, hey, I'm partnered with both of these companies. We realize that you're your credit was so good, we can give you wholesale pricing. That's never happened that I've heard of. You don't <laughs> transition from like, I wanna buy a house for myself to wholesale pricing. Um, so another easy dead giveaway. Uh, but they were looking for some basic information, uh, estimated value of the home, how much cash we're looking to take out to try and further get more information, possibly steal money from them. A uh, couple more. Um, both of these are the same general outcome. Wanting gift cards. Uh, grocery store, doesn't matter where, Apple, Google, you name it. They try to get the gift cards and they steal all the money off of it if they can. 
um, and ultimately the person left buying the gift cards and holding them is typically not able to get any compensation back. A uh, couple more real world ones. So top left here, uh, impersonating the CEO of Target. Bottom left is, uh, did you attempt a $750 purchase at Walgreens? If not, click this super secure link. It's called 53secure.me. And secure is spelled with one three. Um, pending package by DHL, another common one. Uh, and then, hey, we noticed a weird uh, banking transaction. So if you don't think this is you, uh, call this number that won't match the fraud department or your bank's number. IRS. Everybody's probably seen and heard the IRS ones. Um, Amazon, bottom left here, is another kind of newer one. Uh, it's been coming out the last few years. Um, and then on the far right, we have one that everybody's kind of talked about today, uh, the Uber hack. So how the Uber hack happened was uh, 18-year-old hacker social engineered an Uber employee for their password and then spammed the crap out of their MFA. And the employee finally got tired of it, we assume, hit accept, and blindly let them in. Um, they were able to scan the internet, found global admin and a PowerShell script, went on the Slack, said, I'm a hacker, y'all got owned, um, made the news, pretty sure y'all know. So this says CEO, technically Anthony is now our executive chairman, he's not the CEO anymore. Um, but these are direct impersonations of our uh, executive chairman, Anthony Shea. Um, these go to, they've gone to legal, which is hilarious when our legal team gets, hey, can you help me, it's the CEO. Um, they've gone to his direct assistants, they've gone to other employees, um, you name it. And it's always the same, pretty much pretext, uh, almost the same identical uh, verbiage in most of these as well. So pig butchering scam, this isn't directly smishing, this entails social media, this will entail phone calls sometimes, Skyping, video chats, um, but it's basically an in-depth romance and investment scam. Um, the victim's lured into a false pretense, uh, tying in emotional and professional relationships typically, and then the criminals convince the targets to invest in crypto via fake apps, fake sites, uh, sending them money to help them move to the country. There's all kinds of different things. This one's typically crypto though. Um, so as the warning says here, it's only for educational purpose and they, the machine 404 is the person who coded this tool. Uh, it's called fake SMS. And he says he won't be responsible for your shit. So, but basically uh, this is kind of a, a updated version of the social engineering toolkits SMS feature that they had, if you will. Um, Dave took that out a while back because it was extremely dangerous. Um, this one is actually using a specific well website um, and it only lets you send one text for free, but you have the ability to curl the website and if you pay for API access, you can curl it, start sending as many as you want. So you can send impersonate, you can impersonate whatever number you want, send it to whatever number, send whatever text you want. Easy pay and go smishing scheme. So a little bit more about uh, the prevalence of, uh, excuse me, smishing. Um, in September alone, there was about 15.6 billion spam text sent. Um, Texas, we do things bigger and better, we're leading. Uh, 1.3 billion in September alone. Um, 66 billion are ex have already been received this year. Um, and it's about 28 billion or more that's expected in the financial losses this year. So this is uh, a company called Windstream that my team reached out to directly. Um, they're a telco provider. Yeah. 
Yes. Or it's a Texas zip code, at least. To, uh, as far as I know, just Texas zip code or Texas destination. Um, so response provided. Uh, this is a company called Windstream. They do telecommunications. Um, one of the smishes we received, uh, my team basically hunted down where the origini originating uh, number was. We then tried taking it direct to the telco because it was a landline, supposedly. Um, their very long result was we can't help you, nobody can help you, basically, which is pretty interesting um, because they go into detail. It's an industry issue. We're all trying to tackle this. There's no real way that any telco can do this, but if the person who received it calls and reports it, then they might be able to do something and trace it down, which is very 180 from what they're telling me directly. So it, it's kind of interesting when you hear that. Also, there is an anti-robocall uh, principal agreement with the government that Windstream Services and other telcos signed on to and all of our attorney generals to provide this type of assistance. So best practices to try and stop this. Um, iOS 16 just recently came out. They included a new junk SMS forwarding feature, um, so you don't have to forward to any four-digit numbers or anything. Um, if you aren't using an iPhone, you can forward it to 7726, which spells out spam on your phone. Um, the FTC and wireless providers, telcos, created this to try and tackle the problem a bit. Uh, we have recently, on the Lone Depot team, added this to our playbook as a step. Uh, if we get smishing, we'll have the employee, um, whoever gets it, do that. And uh, from what I understand, the, uh, all they have really sent back so far has been confirm the number that it was sent from and like a few details, and then they handle it on the back end there. Um, and then reporting directly to the FTC. Um, that's technically that and the, the 7726 are going to be your, your best methods, if you will. Um, the FTC reporting covers more than just smishing. It covers a whole laundry list of things. Um, so weight loss health scams and if you're getting fake service offers or job offers, uh, if they're impersonating anybody, um, you can report all of that. Goes pretty in depth um, on the reporting. So if you got scammed, how much money did you give the scammer? Um, how many times you might have given it to them. Uh, and then they want all identifying information and things that you can give uh, about the situation and the interaction without obviously posting PII and sensitive information. And then it gives a space to actually report on behalf of someone else. Um, so as a company, if you're having to report a smish, you can report it on behalf of your employees, which is really tedious and annoying, but it's helpful, supposedly. Um, best practices. So US Cellular offer, offers a free call guardian application. Um, T-Mobile Sprint, which is who I have, offers Scam Shield. I switched over to Scam Shield two, two and a half weeks back, uh, and I've received maybe one or two um, phone calls that I didn't know the number of and it wound up, they just didn't leave a voicemail, so it was probably spam of some sort. Um, I haven't received any smishing at all, so I, I can't say 100% if it's due to Scam Shield, but it seems like it. Um, when I was using Robo, or excuse me, Truecaller previous to Scam Shield, I was still getting smishing, I was still getting uh, vishing calls, things like that, um, but I was using the free version, so maybe the paid is different. Um, AT&T offers active armor, uh, Verizon offers call filter, um, there's the do not call registry, which obviously you can put yourself on, but it's not necessarily going to stop malicious people from trying to call you and do things. And then a whole bunch of others, so true caller, robo shield, robo killer, nomo robo, hiya, umail, firewall, call hero, and call app. I can't, I can only talk to true caller, um, that's the one I've used. So uh, just a couple weeks ago, the amazing Rachel Toback uh, gave out information on 
um, ways to take down like doxing information. So specifically in this case, if your phone number's out there, if any PII is out there about you and you want it taken off Google search results, you want it taken off what you can, there's now a new way to request that. So I wanted to make sure since she announced this, I, and it surrounds phone numbers, I included this because if you're like me, you've been doxed at least once. then ask you why you want it to be removed. Um, so shaken, stir, and stir shaken. Um, stir is secure telephony identity revisited. It's the name of the standard of a standardization working group. Um, and it adds, uh, it's what's used to label the cryptographic, cryptographic signatures, excuse me. Um, shaken is signature-based handling of asserted information using tokens, which is a really big stretch to get all that in there. Um, but it's the industry standard that's defining how the voice service providers uh, should implement the STIR technology specifically. Um, and then STIR shaken is the set of technical standards and uh, operating procedures for implementing the call authentication um, for internet protocol-based calls. Um, so stir shaken framework, uh, it, it enables originating voice service providers to attest the validity of asserted caller IDs and sign them with a secure signature. So it helps the telcos track these things down if they have it implemented properly. Um, the industry traceback group, I mentioned, I uh, want to talk about them. So this group was created by US Telecom and the Broadband Association and stood up with the US government. Um, it works for telco providers uh, and ISPs and whatnot. It works for governments, works for enterprises. Um, the only downside to this is they only target robocalls. Why they're not included um, for smishing, I don't know, uh, but they did specifically state they aren't doing smishing yet. Um, probably that whole technology thing again that nobody knows how to enforce, but we have standards for. Uh, so the ways telcos and governments can help right now, um, if the FTC was able to do some follow-up with people uh, for at least the scammed ones financially, they're following up with them to try and let them know where they are with takedowns, things like that. Um, there's legislation right now uh, in the Senate called the Robocall Traceback Enhancement. It's tied to the industry traceback group. That specifically is to protect the telcos and protect the industry traceback group company. Um, telcos actually using the stir shaken solution. Um, expanding industry traceback group's capabilities would greatly enhance this as well. Um, and then telcos being able to work with uh, employees on behalf of their customer, or like our employee who's getting smished and might have our brand being impersonated, CEO impersonation, things like that. If telcos are able to work um, with the actual security team rather than the employee, it helps the employee by not having to be taken away from work, especially if they're hourly or they're compensation based. They don't want to spend hour, two hour, three hours talking to a customer service rep trying to explain I just got a smish from this number and going through all the steps there. Any questions? Yes, sir. In the back. Um, when you were talking about industry, uh, like describing what the uh, custom was, uh, was it like a set of steps that you and I know? Uh, it was a landline that we were trying to have them help us trace, and we gave them the originating number, the time of the incident, the number that received it, the, the fact that they're a customer of theirs. We tried giving them all the information up front, and that's what they responded with. In some of your smishing, did you see where they had spoofed a real number that really did belong to a boss or a manager, or was it always a... So far, we've been lucky that it hasn't been a direct number impersonation. Um, it's always been some random number that doesn't associate to them. Sort of like a contact, you know, contact stealer kind of thing. Yeah, it will, so. Like a, spe spear yeah. smishing? Yeah, so it, 
being in the industry I'm in, my mortgage people need to be able to be known on the internet to everybody so they can try and make sales, they can try and make deals. So you, when you try and tell people who live their life by word of mouth and social media to cut it out and try and keep it down a little bit, you're met with resistance, understandably. So you, you have to find the fine line, but yeah. Thankfully, so far, it's not been a direct impersonation. Yeah. Any idea why Texas has targeted more than other places? You got me, <laughs> honestly. That's a toughie, just because it could be somebody word of mouthing and overhearing in the shop. Um, that's probably the most likely scenario. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's a really difficult one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Any benchmark exemption that you subscribe with from newsletters that are more than some that are yeah. sold nationally? Definitely. Uh, so, kind of both. Um, so in our playbooks ourselves, we annotated it as a step that we need to ensure we follow. So when we're going through, okay, somebody got a smish, here's all the steps we do. One of the last things sure of is uh, did we have them do that, basically. Yeah, it, when it gets to things like a uh, 7726, you can't do it on their behalf, but you can still report to the FTC on their behalf, for instance. So it, we, we try to get them, um, with 7726 being newer, I don't think we'll get much resistance because it's really simple. If they don't know how to hold it down and forward the message, we can always jump on a phone call, show them real quick, doesn't take very long, or Google how to do it and send them a link to do that. Um, but yeah, it, it's very helpful when we can do it on their behalf. It's just tedious. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Are there any trade-offs for signing your whole enterprise up, like the whole company up with a, a vendor protection? I can't speak to that just because I've never seen it. Um, been in multiple companies, but I don't know of any company that gives all their employees that type of protection. I, if it's a reputable company and they they have a proven track record, I don't see why it wouldn't be terrible. But more for the T-Mobile, whatever the hardware was, or the second, like the one offered by the, by the provider. Oh, those are all free, honestly, but. Uh, but you have to in, enroll in it, right? You have to sign up for it? Uh, you just download the app. Okay, so that makes Yeah, sense. you just download the app in the play, whatever Play Store you have and uh, do it that way. No other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you everyone.